I'm at the old church at a place called Coolia on what's known as the Famine Road from Wine Gap to Callan. And this graveyard, I've been told, there is a, a large, some would call it a mass grave, where people from the workhouse in Callan uh, were interred, literally carted off into this grave. It's in a field, you can't get to it any way other than crossing a field. Really strange, no pathway up to it. But I'm going to take a look now over the wall here and into the graveyard. So you can see here the steps that you have to climb over the wall to get onto the other side. Here we go. So I'm just having a look now in the graveyard. It's a very small looking one. There's some headstones over there. I'm going to have a look and see what's in them. Sorry about my uh, wonky camera work. But this is all being on, done on the mobile phone. So, it is a beautiful little place. Absolutely beautiful. But I think there's a real tragedy behind it in terms of the uh, what's happened here is a little looks like an altar almost I think they might say a mass here or something like that at some point but uh, as I said earlier in another piece of film that the workhouse was the biggest building that had ever been built in Callan and there's it's a big building now I'm going to go there tomorrow and there's only a third of the size of what it was it must have been massive I can't imagine what the conditions were like inside there for those poor people who died of starvation they died in the workhouse in starvation 3,315 people in all between the years of 1845 and 1851. Just incredible. And yet, there was food enough to feed everybody. This was the tragic part of it. This was the tragic side of what happened. So in, it wasn't really a a famine, as I believe all famines are human made because people don't have to starve anywhere because, and even then Sir Robert Peel who was the Prime Minister in Britain he refused to give way on the Irish and said they couldn't be helped, they would have to help themselves, it was this kind of laissez-faire idea of Toryism makes you wonder why Tories are so much hated even now. You know, you don't have to be a socialist to hate them for what they did and what they believed or was for them, i.e. the food that was produced in Ireland. And there were food riots and uh, there's record of food riots in County Cork and elsewhere. But uh, of course, where I come from in North Devon, where I live now in North Devon, Torrington, around that area, you go further over towards Coombe Martin to Arlington Court. And one of the biggest landowners of all lived at Arlington Court and owns that place, the Chichester family. And I suppose a lot of Devonians must have come to Ireland, maybe some stay. Have a look inside the old church now, which is, as you can see, a ruin. One wonders what all these little rooms were, or these spaces. It's 
7.30 in the evening, by the way, and the light is fantastic. It's cloudy. And we're right near the great mountain of Sleeve Namon, but I can't film it because it's not revealing herself. The mountain of the women. Now somewhere in here, there should be a clue to this grave. If not, I'm going to have to do some more research in Callan tomorrow to see if I can find out something more. But you can see these gravestones are very old, but they are obviously of parishioners and, who, and not the poor people who were in the workhouse. The paupers, as they were called. And their grave is what I'm looking for. I was sent here by people in the last cemetery I went to, where I saw the IRA memorial, and they thought it was over here. So it may not be the case. I think it may be closer to Callum, but I'll get there tomorrow. Delaney's Pub, a lovely old pub on the Carrick Road. I'm just looking at one family here. Gravestone, all the different ones going right into from the 19th to the 20th century. Some very young. As is common, I suppose, when we look at graves anywhere around the world, what tragedies unfold on a gravestone. What lives unfold, long lives too. 78 years old, died 14th of December 1986. So that's an old gravestone which has been carved Look at that one. Richard Funchian died the 1st of November 1964, age 61, interred in the Bronx, New York. Another story of Irish emigration. I wonder what kind of life he had. Over in... in Ireland, in... Uh, now, actually, I'm just looking. Maybe he was an American anyway. Possibly. Maybe he wasn't an immigrant. have to check that one out. She died in 1998, aged 88. And her husband, Richard Funchion, it's not an, an Irish-sounding name, died 1st of November 1964. I guess she was the one who emigrated, Nee Lynch. She was the one who emigrated and met her husband, Richard. So she had all those years without him. 34 years on her own. Oh, well. So, this is it. I'm just... This kind of arable farmland all around this part of the world in the south east of Ireland. Not like the other part of Ireland where I sometimes go to, West Clare, where I have family. Over there, it's tough land. But over here, it's green. Reminds me a bit of uh, the war graveyards in northern France. One in particular I can think of in a place called Le Quatre. 
Chinese graveyard and in there there's this beautiful tree. It's just just a hint of it in this place, this walled graveyard. This small walled graveyard in the middle of a field at a place called Kulia on the famine road from Callan. No pathway, just a walled graveyard surrounded by fields. Quite unusual. Very moving, actually. I've often wondered where this place was. I've been told about it. tomorrow to find the mass grave. Try and make sense of it.